All right, well, it's 11.15. We'll go ahead and get started on time. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. My name is Kenny Kettner. I'm the Information Products Lead for the Montana State Library. That is state of Montana, not Montana State University. I wish they had marketed themselves a little differently, but uh, I live and work in Helena. Drove down for the day. Uh, and thanks to Rob and everybody with Montana Programmers for putting this conference together. It's really exciting for me. But uh, I'm new to Montana. Moved up here from Texas in October, just in time for a long winter. Um, so still adjusting to the whole Montana thing. But uh, what we're going to do today is uh, sort of explore what's out there in terms of uh, chatbots and some of the possibilities. Uh, if at any time you have a comment or question, feel free to stop me. Just ch jump right in. Uh, this is meant to be kind of light and fun, and uh, maybe we'll pick up something useful along the way. I so, uh, believe very strongly in the value of being a generalist, so this kind of fits into that camp. You know, Maybe it's another tool for your toolbox. So without further ado, this talk today is going to be kind of a survey of what's out there for chat box from an enthusiastic amateur. Uh, that is to say, I don't use chatbots or develop chatbots in my day-to-day -day, uh, work. Uh, mostly we do curated access to public data and maps and GIS info at the State Library. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about what they are and why you, some reasons why you might use them, uh, and we'll get into some examples as well. But it's not going to be a definitive guide to everything. We're not really going to do any live coding, but we might tweak a Twitter bot. Uh, and again, it's not that serious, but thank you again for coming, and don't forget to grab one of those handouts if you're just getting here. So, what is a chatbot? We'll go to the expert of all things, Wikipedia. Uh, it is a computer program which conducts conversation via auditory or textual methods. Uh, and I thought also worth mentioning that this, these are becoming more useful. Uh, people are coming to appreciate a human-like reaction, uh, excuse me, interaction with your software. And so that sort of usage holds the prospect of moving chatbot technology from the shelf reserved for curios to that mark genuinely us useful computational methods. So, what might you do with a chatbot? And these, the category is broad enough now to uh, include virtual assistants that you can interact with by voice. Of course, we all know Siri on Apple devices. Cortana is pictured here from the Halo series uh, on Microsoft. Alexa on Amazon and Google Voice. So some of the more productive uses um, for chatbots, apart from virtual assistants, uh, are you might want to replace or enhance your frequently asked questions. You might want to provide a live, quote unquote, live experience off hours, uh, so you have staff that normally respond to customers and they can't be there, you could have uh, some sort of chat interface available to them. And they might get to the, what they're looking for quickly. And by the way, if you just came in, there is a handout. I want to make sure I'll get them pass them around. Thanks. There are, of course, uh, some more nefarious uses for bots. Uh, I'm sure you can think of more that are not covered here, but uh, lately, they've been kind of a talking point even in politics with Twitter bots, you know, millions of fake Twitter accounts. Um, on the reverse of that, Twitter accounts that are designed to attract people who are out there looking to harass people and instead waste their time. That's the idea of a honey bot. Um, of course, advertising, you know, all of a sudden you get a pop-up on a website that says, hey, you might be interested in this, and you're probably not talking to a real person, it's probably a bot that is soliciting you. And in general, you know, there's some ethical questions. Uh, of course, with spam and denial of service, that's obvious. Phishing, that's obviously bad. But even an unwanted pop-up chat bot, you know, that might really offend some customers, potentially. So you want to you um, take that sort of thing into account. I mean, I've, I've heard of businesses that have put up those virtual assistant interfaces and then had to adjust how they approach their uh, approach those customers. And of course on the fun end of things, uh, people that write games or interactive fiction, bots can be your NPC dialogue right away. Uh, there are people coming at it from a research angle trying to get a bot to pass a Turing test. 
And of course, there's generative um, fiction, art, music, etc. So let's get into the first uh, first example of bot technology out there, AIML or AML. Stands for Artificial Intelligence Markup Language. And of course, my emphasis is that artificial intelligence is in quotes because it's really not anything like that. It's just an XML file. Um, but it's been around forever. Uh, developed in the mid-90s originally. It is free and open source. And because it's been around forever, there are interpreters for AML in just about any language you could care to. Uh, explore it in. Um, so we'll see if we can get, I always love doing live internet on a presentation, right? That's what you want to do. So, pardon me. Uh, you can go to alicebot.org and it, it even looks like a website that's been around forever in my opinion. <laughs> you can just kind of tell with one glance, right? But uh, Pandora Bots is kind of the big company that, or yeah, they are a business, but that that, that does bots built around AML. Um, but there's a lot of resources there. Uh, we'll also look at this uh, Python example briefly. Um, back up to the presentation real quick. So in a the way an AML file looks, very simply, uh, it looks just like an XML file. You have different categories and patterns that you're trying to match. Um, not shown here beyond this, this very basic hello world type of example uh, is that you can have wildcard input. So you could have hello star and that would respond to hello followed by anything. You can have responses, random responses just with a simple unordered list, uh, li tags. You can uh, use recursion through the SRAI tag, which is a really verbose way of doing it. We'll look at a, a better example in another, uh, another language later. Uh, and, but the thing about AML is that since it's been around forever, there are huge libraries like every noun in the English language or lists of common appliances. You know. So if you, need, if you need that sort of thing for your project, you, chances are you can just Google and find it real quick. Uh, okay, now let's go back to that uh, Python example and give it a quick look. So they create the sample AML file we were looking at. There you can see the... Is that, yeah, let me plus that. I'm sorry. That's too small. Is that better? Maybe F11 as well. There we go. I didn't know I'd get the TV. But that is okay. So it's available as a package you can get through PIP. Um, and basically, they just have a, a while true loop and uh, process inf information that way. Um, and the idea is that you would load up the different AML files that you wanted and, and respond um, on, on to what the message is, you know, sort of if else, or build, build a huge case. You can also track uh, sessions for individual chats and uh, <coughs> collect in input from the user. So like this get tag right here. If they, uh, if they tell you their dog's name is Max, then you can retrieve that later. So that's the AML package in Python. Further work left as an exercise to the reader. Any questions so far? Are we doing okay? So far so good? Okay, cool. Then we will move on to Tracery. Uh, and that's the one that's this handout here. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's kind of kind of lightweight, but uh, what it is is a uh, story grammar generation library for JavaScript by Kate Compton, who's a PhD student. Uh, and it's got the GitHub link right here. Uh, and good tutorials available for this as well. In fact, this little one pager almost tells you everything you need to get started. Um, so some of the examples on the zine, they've got interactive 
Uh, well, sort of, it's interruption junction. It's kind of hilarious. You can Google for it later. You just start talking, and then uh, if you stop, someone else interrupts you, and they keep talking. It's, it's kind of meant to illustrate social anxiety, I think. Uh, there's a hipster restaurant menu generator, so you can get, like, the uh, never cake, which is caramel biscuits sprinkled with cashews, okay. Um, they go on to include some role-playing game examples, like the random innkeeper at your inn who comments on a piece of your player's equipment, you know, nice sort, player name, whatever. You can do that with tracery. Um, and also examples for creating SVG graphics, which are part of HTML5, and you can randomly generate graphics with tracery. So, um, Nora Reed has some great resources available. Um, for the Twitter bot creation, which we'll, we will go through that here in, in a second. Um, in fact, let me pull up that window. Nope, that's bot man. Where did it go? <coughs> okay, so yeah, there's Galaxy Kate's uh, GitHub. There's the tutorial on tracery. There's a lot of visual editors for tracery as well. Here's one for. Uh, on cheapbotsdonequick.com, you can you've got a live editor uh, for the tracery, which again is just a JSON object. Um, that's one I made in about an hour on Thursday, just to tweet random Montana moments featuring Montana people, places, and activities, which I would love your help in enhancing. We'll come back. To, oops, we'll come back to that in a second. But so Think Peace Bot is one of the more hilarious examples. Um, you know, move over eggplant emoji, <laughs> ARGs are back. Is pay-per-view the explanation for laws that straight up actual fascism predict Donald Trump, yada yada. You get the idea. Uh, alignment bot generates a random uh, alignment a la D Dungeons and Dragons, like chaotic undoubting is an alignment, adjunctive neutral, so on and so forth. I find it funny. Endless screaming generates a random scream. <laughs> a very simple usage of it, but uh, appropriate, perhaps. Uh, and the, the tutorial that's on uh, borrow.net, which is Nora Reed's website, uh, walks you through creating Hydrate Bot, which is a, a just a generates a random reminder to drink water. It's a good cue. Yes, sir. Go ahead. How is it uh, generating the text? Like, what's special about it versus just using like a random number generator? That's. I mean, this. It's exactly what it is. It's basically a templated list with random things filling it. Um, and it's. I mean, Mozart did this with a piece of music where you roll dice and put together a new sonata every time. It's the same thing. It's been around forever. So. Um, but the difference is this is really easy to use. You just sign in with your Twitter account on cheapbotsdonequick.com and you can monkey around with your JSON right here. Uh, this is the one for Montana Moment Bot, which I made the other day. Uh, Dirk Benedict and Tom Brokaw should really get together. Uh, yeah. Anyway. A million household uses for tracery. <laughs> okay. Any questions, comments about tracery? Cheap bots done quick, and that stuff. Okay. So yeah, like I said, it's super easy to use. Took me about an hour to use. The hardest part is thinking of the stuff to put in the lists, basically. Okay, let's look at Botman, which is a PHP framework um, that's uh, basically platform agnostic. It runs on anything and but or can message across any of these channels, but it runs on your server. Let's put it that way. And it's at botman.io. Uh, and so hello world for that would look like uh, including the Botman libraries, putting in your your credentials for the various services, creating a, a, a Botman instance, and then uh, listening for the patterns you want to respond to. And 
that's pretty much it. Um, you listen for the different keywords and handle the response with a function. Uh, you can capture user input uh, either through fill in the blank style or with a, it's got full regular expression support as well. Uh, you can respond with your own custom business logic or they have uh, middleware available for different services as well. Uh, and you can also do images, audio, video, and location-based uh, messaging. Uh, let's see. So the, the conversation object is cached on the server and uh, it can store and retrieve information about a particular conversation which is ID to that user. Uh, and then you can also perform natural language processing on those functions, uh, which that basically means intents and entities, uh, which we will get to momentarily when we talk about the API.ai service. But first, I'll show you the Botman website. I'm going to escape again. So yeah, um, very good documentation on Botman.io walks you through the installation. Um, again, you can specify what, what pattern to listen for and what you want to respond with. Uh, and then these are the different parameters that you can interact with. And it does have, again, full support for API.ai. So let's move on to API.ai. Any questions on Botman? Okay. So API.ai is a free, and this is definitely one of those moments where you want to be aware that if you're getting something for free, you're not the customer, you're the product. Uh, so it's a free but branded service for uh, natural language processing and natural language understanding. Um, and it's all done over HTTP. Uh, and they've got an SDK for pretty much everything. And basically, you feed it a query. It gives you a JSON object uh, that spells out the query that you sent it and the response that it provides to it. Um, and this is where we get into the idea of entities, intents, and context. So again, an entity is something that you can interact with. Uh, maybe it's a music player on your website and it's a song that you want to play for your customer. Uh, or an intent would be like playing the song. Uh, the entity would be the song. Uh, a context is uh, a, basically a conversational framework that you're within in the current moment. So if you're t looking up what the weather is, it's got extra functionality because it knows you're talking about looking up the weather that wouldn't be available just at a general point in the conversation. And that has a downside that we'll look at in a minute. Um, so these are bigger ideas in natural language processing, but implemented by API.ai. And we've got a handy video for that. It's just three minutes. So we'll play that real quick. Welcome to API.ai. Over the next few minutes, I will show you how to get started with our platform. We'll start by creating some simple music player functionalities. We're in the developer console and here in the music player agent. An agent corresponds to a bot, app, service, or device that you would like to add conversational user experiences to. There are two main concepts that are important to creating interaction scenarios on API.ai, and those are entities and intents. Entities are objects that you'll want to interact with. So for a music player agent, perhaps we have a list of some different artists or songs. Here are a couple different artists that I've added for demo purposes and you also see that I have added some different ways that you could refer to them by. The next step is to create an intent. An intent maps what the user says to what action should be taken in your business logic. An obvious intent for a music player is, well, to play music. In order to train the system, I provide examples in natural language of what the user could say. Then I specify which action should take place when the user says something similar to my examples. I can also add a speech back response down here. Now let's test it out. I'd like to hear Eminem. 
So we see that the intent was matched as the play music intent, the action is played, and the artist is Eminem. So what you're getting back is this structured JSON object. With the I'm going to pause it on the JSON object uh, real quick. It gives you, um, oh well, it's going to cover that. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Um, it gives you the, the timestamp, the ID of the request, uh, the result of it. I think it also specifies the query that you sent in. But uh, pretty, pretty detailed response. Okay, back to the video. The result query, action, and relevant parameters. Thus far, we've only looked at single query and response, but maybe now you want to support commands related to these queries like play the next song. For this, we use context. Contexts are like topics in discussion, and they help us coordinate the conversation. All we have to do is set an outgoing context in this intent. So I'll say, I'll call it playing music. Now I can create a new intent called next song. I provide a couple examples here, and I can set a playing music as a conditional incoming context. Now we can try it out. Could you please play Madonna? We see that the output context has been set to playing music. So now I could say, I'd like to hear something else. And it says, OK, skipping to the next song. And it matched the next song. Into it. Alternatively, you could also use slot filling to achieve similar functionality, where we can create a flexible nonlinear dialogue in one single intent. For example, let's say that the artist and song are required. So I just check these boxes here and define a couple prompts for if the user doesn't mention them. I've also gone ahead and added a speech back response and I can try it out. I'd like to hear something by Eminem. And it asks which song I'm in the mood for. Could you please play Lose Yourself? Of course. It says playing Lose Yourself by Eminem. Now that the intent has been trained, you can work with our API directly or through one of the SDKs to get a JSON representing the meaning of the command. You can also use a webhook by providing a URL where the command should be sent and fulfilled. Of course, this is just the beginning. With API.ai, you can design advanced conversational user experiences for all of your products. So they're basically offering uh, AI as a service. You know, your, your app runs on your <coughs> server, and then you're sending off uh, these requests to process your user's input. They figure out what it means using the, the interface that they just demonstrated and ship you back that JSON object, which you then uh, handle on your end. So that's the basic idea of API.ai. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, a couple more examples, more on the commercial end. Uh, IBM Watson, I've been seeing a lot of ads for this lately, so I decided to include it. Um, they have a freemium version. Uh, I think it's the first 10,000 uses of it are free um, per month. Uh, it's, it's got a visual editor, so you can do it without coding. Um, they've got a pretty good selection of SDKs, uh, not as, nu as numerous as some of the previous examples. Uh, can hook into services like Slack. Like, um, and it's at IBM.com slash Watson. Um, we can watch a quick demo of it. I'm a, I'll leave that as an option since I know we're getting close. But uh, I will point out uh, one downside of context I mentioned earlier. Uh, the, the simulation that they offer for the demo is you're driving a car. Uh, and I had asked it, like, OK, where's the close gas station? And it pops up that map. And then it started raining in the simulation. And I said, OK, turn on the wipers. And it's like, well, I found five gas stations. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so because it was trapped in the context of looking for a gas station, it didn't know how to handle my request to turn on the wipers, which it would normally understand. So I think that uh, probably could have been better configured there. But uh, uh, one, one final example, Amazon Alexa. Uh, I've never seen a company more hungry to get people to create skills for them. Um, They've gone from a free t-shirt if you create an Alexa skill now to a free Amazon Echo Dot if you create a skill. Um, so yeah, it, it's not hard to do apparently, but uh, they, what's cool about it is it's, in a, it's a product that's in a lot of homes now, so your, your skill might actually get used by a broad section of the public. 
Uh, they have smart home tie-ins, you know, with all the automation around your home. Uh, flash briefing news is, news applications are popular. Uh, they've added video now recently. Uh, game show apps are really popular in it apparently. You know, like asking interactive quizzes with Alexa. Um, you can build and deploy for free, uh, which is handy and uh, be a good way to add a voice project to your resume if you've got a spare weekend. And that's all at developer.amazon.com. And I think I'll just wrap it up there and leave some time for questions. So uh, if anyone's looked outside projects, hit me up. I'm always looking for interesting projects. So thank you.